Good Day People of God is Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic, who would like to hear the word of God for the week. But before we do so, let us start with a word of prayer. So in reverence to our Heavenly Father, our God, let us bow our head and let us pray. Blessed and wonderful Father, exalted King, the only true God, Yahweh, thank you for this new occasion that you're giving unto us to be found in your presence. We surrender therefore ourselves before you. In your mighty hands, our body, soul, and spirit, mind and heart, the air that fed the heaven above us and around us, and in us, we surrender everything. We pray that you take control and that you forgive us for whatever we may have done, said, or thought that did not honor or glorify you. And that you purify us with your water of purification of your blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. That you purge your conscience from any dead works that we will be able to serve you as we ought to in the name of Jesus Christ. And we stand against anything that opposes itself against your truth. Anything that opposes itself against the understanding of your mystery contained in your word. We bound them and cast them into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We ask you, Abba Father, take us deeper and deeper into the understanding of your word, into the, the, the unfolding of your mysteries in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you. All the glory and honor belongs to you forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we'll take our main passage of the Holy Scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 to verse 16. So reading the word of God in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 to verse 16 in the name of Jesus Christ. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gift unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower part of the earth? He that descended is the same that ascended up far above all heaven, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things who is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes the increase, make increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. May the Lord bless his word, may it come full of understanding, revelation, grace, life, and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. So, for, so we continue in our main theme of teaching about the fivefold ministries. So for this week, we're going to be speaking about the ministry of doctor or the ministry of teacher. So the, the title for the teaching of this week is the ministry of doctor or the ministry of teacher. The term doctor comes from the word doctrine, which means teaching or instruction. And this is the reason why a doctor of the word of God is also called a teacher or an instructor of the word of God. Hence the main aim of the ministry of doctor is to establish the holy doctrine of the word of God. The role of a doctor of the word of God is to establish believers in the truth which is the holy doctrine of the kingdom of God. Thus a doctor is a teacher of the holy doctrine of the word of God for the given time frame of the church. And this is one of the reasons Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 45 to 47, 
who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his law has made rulers over his household, to give them meat, in other words, the doctrine or the teaching in due season. Verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, find, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. The doctor of, or the teacher of the word of God should therefore be faithful and remain faithful to the teaching of the holy doctrine of the word of God that God has given to the church for the given period of time. The doctor will thus mainly focus on teaching this particular holy doctrine of the word of God. Hence, a doctor or a teacher of the word of God lays down the right foundations in the life of Christians by teaching them the holy doctrine of the word of God. A doctor thus teaches the holy doctrine of the word of God so that Christians be established in this holy doctrine and not be led astray by false teachings. Hence the word of God state in Titus chapter 2 verse 1 to 2 which says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, in other words, holy doctrine, that the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Titus chapter 1 verse 9 had to say, Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by some doctrine, in other words, holy doctrine, both to exhort and to convict those who contradict. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 13, which says, Hold fast the form of some words, in other words, some doctrine, which you have heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. The main seven doctrines of Christianity are the unicity of God, the creation of universe, of the universe, and humanity. I repeat, the creation, the seven, the seven main doctrine of Christianity. One, the unicity of God the creation of the universe and humanity, the fall of humanity into sin, the redemption of humanity, the second coming of Jesus Christ or the rapture of the church, the judgment of the world and the new Jerusalem or the new heaven and the new earth. The doctrine of the unicity of God teaches that there is only one true God who manifests in the person of God the Father, God the Son, in the person of Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom all things are, and we in Him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him. First John chapter 5 verse 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And these three are one. So the Father, the Word, Jesus Christ is called the Word of God. And the Bible says, the Word became flesh, and we are begotten of His glory, even the glory of the only begotten of the Son of God. So, Jesus Christ is the Word of God. So, they say, the Father, the Word, in other terms, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. 
And these three are one. So there is only one God. One God. The doctrine of the creation of the universe and humanity teaches that God created the heaven and the earth with everything that is in them. Thus, the, thus, the human being was created by God in the image of God for the same way God is tripartite. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So God also created the human being tripartite. Body, another term, body, soul, and spirit. Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. And John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 concludes to say, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit, and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is to say that mankind is made body, soul, and spirit. So it's three-parted. The same way God also is three-parted, but is one being. The same way my human being also is one being, but he has three parts. The doctrine of the fall of humanity into sin teaches that the human being committed sin against God by disobeying God. Thus, human beings, through Adam and Eve, corrupted their human nature. And because the consequence of sin is death, hence, human beings are meant to end up in hell. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 had to say, For the wages of sin is death. The first part of the verse. And this, this is where the doctrine of redemption of humanity comes into play. For God came physically on earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And he sacrificed himself by being crucified on the cross to pay the price of the redemption of humanity. And he resurrected from the dead to justify human beings by making them righteous in the eyes of God. Hence, whosoever will accept Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord, shall be saved. But whosoever does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ will be condemned. Romans chapter 4 verse 25 says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our, just, our justification? Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 16 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes no shall be dead. So here is in the doctrine of redemption or salvation also is found the doctrine of the new birth and the doctrine of baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so whosoever does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be condemned. And this is where the doctrine of the judgment of the world teaches about the judgment day in, a, in which every human being will be judged according to his deeds. And whosoever will not have his name written in the book of life will be thrown in the lake of fire, which is hell, also known as the second death. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 which says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 2, uh, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 had to say, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
But before the judgment of the world comes, Jesus Christ will come back to take his church. This is the doctrine of the second coming of Jesus Christ or the rapture of the church. This is where Jesus Christ will come back to rapture his church in the end time during the period of great persecution. Luke chapter 18 verse 8, Jesus said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth so referring to himself as the son of man so when he will return on earth shall he find faith first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 had to say then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so we shall be raptured. We shall be taken to meet the Lord in the air. In the air. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 conclude to say. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 conclude to say. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. And because we are living this la uh, the last days, the main holy doctrine that needs to be taught and laid as a foundation in the life of Christian is the teaching that prepares Christian for the rapture of the church. After the judgment of the world, God will create a new earth and a new heaven. And God will bring down on earth from heaven the new Jerusalem in which God will dwell forever in the midst of his people and this is the doctrine of the new Jerusalem or the new heaven and the new earth Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 to 4 which says and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for a husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be the God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The doctrine of the unicity of God is essential because it aims at eradicating all forms of idolatry by imparting into the believers understanding about the fact that there is only one true God. The doctrine of the creation is crucial because if human beings do not understand that we all have been created by God, we will not be able to understand the fall of humanity into sin. And if there is no fall of humanity into sin, there is no need of salvation or redemption. And there is also no need of judgment. This simply means that if human beings cannot understand the doctrine of creation, they will not be able to believe in salvation. And as a consequence, human beings will be condemned as they will reject the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for them. The doctrine of the judgment of the world is important because it creates in human beings the fear of God. Thus, believers to what does causing the believer to walk in holiness as the word of God says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 is Jesus say, he say and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell in other terms fear God who has the ability who has the power to cast you in hell Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil in order to head sin proverbs chapter 16 verse 6 had to say the second part of the verse 
uh, or, or can read the whole verse says but by mercy and truth iniquity is purged and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil in other words men depart from sin so the doctrine of the judgment of the world and the doctrine of a new heaven and a new earth both bring hope and perseverance in the believer for through these two doctrines the believer is reassured that it is only a matter of time before God puts an end to all wickedness by throwing Satan and all the other fallen angels into the lake of fire, including all human agents of the kingdom of darkness. And the believer is therefore confident that the time is fast approaching for the kingdom of darkness and for the kingdom of for, 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 for the kingdom of darkness to be destroyed completely and for him for the believer himself to be with his heavenly father to live eternally in joy and in peace in a place where there is no more sorrow no more pain no more sickness or disease no more death and so on thus through the doctrine of the judgment of the world and the doctrine of the new heaven and new earth the believer is encouraged to continue this race of endurance which is the race of faith by living in total obedience to the word of god despite all the persecution and the attacks from the kingdom of darkness knowing that all these adversities are nothing to be compared to the eternal peace and happiness which is to come thus the book of roman declares in roman chapter 8 verse 18 which says for i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The fact that the, a doctrine determines the principle upon which a church operates, for the doctrine establishes the belief system on which the church will function. It is therefore imperative that the doctor of the word of God teaches the right doctrine for if the doctrine of a given church is wrong this will cause the entire local church to err in their belief in other terms the practice of the christian faith in that particular local church will be based on false teachings for a believer is a, for a belief is established through the teaching of the word even as the book of Romans states in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 which says so then faith comes by hearing in other words belief comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God this implies that the believers in such a local church will think that they are serving God whereas it will not be the case simply because they would be doing things which are contrary to the word of God. And this is why Jesus Christ warned us by saying in John chapter 16 verse 1 to 3, These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yet the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he is he does God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So they will be killing Christians thinking that they are serving God. Simply because the doctrine upon which they act is wrong. The doctrine upon which they, 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 they would gives them the permission to go and kill other Christians is a false doctrine. But because it's their belief system, so they do what the doctrine is saying. Thus through wrong doctrines or teachings, a doctor or a teacher of the word of God can lead an entire congregation to live in sin simply because the faith of the believers will be based on false doctrine 
And this is one of the reasons the book of Romans declares in the Roman chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. And the word of God therefore warns us not to venture into the ministry of doctor or teacher of the word of God for the simple reason that doctors or teachers of the word of God will be judged more severely than any other minister of God even as mentioned in the book of James, James chapter 3 verse 1 which says my brethren let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment thus because the disciple follow the teacher for the disciple are not above the teacher this means that whatsoever the teacher will say the disciple will do and this is why jesus christ said in luke chapter 6 verse 39 to 40 and he spoke and as he spoke a parable to them can the blind lead the blind will they not both fall into the ditch a disciple is not above his teacher but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his, disciple, his teacher. We can therefore understand why teacher will be judged more severely than the disciples. Simply because the, the, the disciple will do, he will do what the teacher teaches. This is why we should not rush to stand on the pulpit to teach the word of God. But we should rather wait patiently for the time of God and we should not even try to venture in such a ministry if we are not truly called for this ministry the purpose of a doctrine is to provide understanding so that believers can live by it being established in the truth which is the word of God and this is why David could say the following in Psalm 119 verse 99 have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies in other words, your teaching your doctrine and my meditation and just Christ added to say in John chapter 17 verse 17 sanctify them through your truth sanctify them by your truth your word is truth so the doctrine therefore establishes in the truth of the word of God there are many false doctrines which have been propagated in the world. For instance, the doctrine that presents Mary as being the mother of God. This false doctrine aims at causing believers to worship Mary, thus causing believers to commit idolatry. For God clearly said in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, had to say, For you shall worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Hence, this false doctrine that presents Mary as the mother of God, try to present Mary as being in a higher position than God. For the child or the son should always be obedient to his parent. For the word of God says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, Children, obey your parent in the Lord, for this is right. So which means that if Mary is the mother of God therefore God be therefore she is the parent of God therefore God must obey Mary this therefore makes Mary to be the one with supreme authority and not Jesus Christ and this is why we can see certain religions that they mostly pray to Mary and not to Jesus Christ. This is idolatry. And we must repudiate such doctrines, eradicate such doctrine from the church. Another example of false doctrines is the one that teaches believers to pray to the dead saints. 
This is exactly the same as praying to ancestors. Which is again pure idolatry. For the word of God says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 to 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Jesus Christ. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So because Jesus Christ gave himself as a ransom for human beings. So he is eligible to be the mediator between man and God the Father. And no one else, only one mediator, no, no, other, no other human being, no other ancestor, only Jesus Christ. Knowing that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. So he is no longer, he's no, he's no dead, he's no longer dead, he's alive. All those dead saints or ancestors, they are dead. John chapter 14 verse 13, which says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, this is Jesus speaking, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever we must ask, we must ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ confirmed it again in John chapter 15 verse 16 to say, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So you must ask in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus and in no other name. Leviticus chapter 90 verse 31. The NIV version say, Do not defile yourself by burning to mediums, by turning to mediums, or to those who consult the spirit of the dead. I am the Lord your God. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 to 11 says there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire or who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritist a, a spiritist or one who calls up the dead so we must not interact with the spirit of the dead. And this spirit of the dead, that we think that we are talking to our ancestors, they are not actually our ancestors. These are demons impersonating our ancestors. And when you enter in contact with them, they possess you. So you, de you become demon possessed. Because these are familiar spirit. We call them familiar spirit. These were demons that when our, our ancestors were alive, they were monitoring, they were sent by the devil, the kingdom of, the, of, the kingdom of darkness, to monitor our, 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 our ancestors so that they can know everything about our ancestors. And therefore, when you call upon, you speak to the spirit of the dead, you are calling upon the, this demon comes and impersonates or ancestors talking to you and as they do so you give them willing way you open a door in your you open door in your life so that they can come and possess you so we must not pray to the dead saints they are not an in, in, intermediary between us and God they are not there is only one that is a, a, a mediator between God and and, uh, and, and us is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is no longer dead he's alive so let us pray to say we thank you glorious father almighty savior wonderful God Yahweh thank you for the knowledge and the understanding that you have given unto us for this teaching and we thank you as well for the ministry of doctor that you have entrusted unto your church that we are and we pray Heavenly Father, asking you to help your church that we are to properly use the ministry of doctor to teach the holy doctrine of your kingdom so that true Christian throughout the world be well established in the truth of your word and that we be no more led astray by any false teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you forgive us any time that we uh, believe in false doctrine, in false teachings. Forgive us and cleanse us the blood 
and set us free from any demonic power, any evil spirit that has manipulated us, that has taken control of our lives or blinded us through this false teaching. We pray that you set us free from all such spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And that the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, may lead us in the name of Jesus Christ. And because we are living the last days, let us therefore focus on preparing your church for your return, Lord Jesus Christ, by teaching your people about the rapture and the judgment of the world so that your church can walk in holiness at all times by fearing you for through the fear of God, your people that we are shall depart from evil in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us also teach your people about the new Jerusalem, that you will bring them from heaven so that you can dwell forever in the midst of your sons and daughters that we are. And as your people understand this truth, let your church be reassured and encouraged and persevere knowing that the eternal peace and joy that is awaiting for us is fast approaching. We thank you, Abba Father, for hearing us and for granting our prayer. May you be magnified forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.